of Pentecost. Guess where we're reading from? Acts chapter 2. Now let's just remember that um, Jesus died on the cross, three days in the tomb, rose from the dead, appeared to his disciples several times that are recorded. We don't know altogether how much time Jesus spent with his disciples, but several times are recorded um, of Jesus appearing with his disciples and sharing further instruction with them. And one of the last instructions that Jesus um, said, he, he, he gave them this direction, go stay. He did, go stay. He said, and what, what was that scripture? Go therefore and spread the gossip. Gossip. <laughs> Help us, Jesus. <laughs> Go therefore and spread the gospel. And where are we supposed to go to? All the nations, all the world. Oh, Lord, I thought you might get it right today. <laughs> But then he said, stay. He said, stay because I don't want you to go unprepared. Jesus said, I know I've taught you everything I can teach you in three years. Um, you've seen magnificent things, but you can't do it by yourself. So before you go, stay. Stay in Jerusalem and wait for my power. I'm sending another to be with you. And this is what we celebrate today with Pentecost. Listen now for the word of the Lord. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were, staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in their own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all of these men who, men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of the, us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and all the parts of Libya near Cyrene. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we all hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them, and they said they have had too much wine. And then Peter stood up with the eleven, and he raised his voice and he addressed the crowd, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for your word, for your power, for your spirit. On this Pentecost day, <coughs> rain in our lives, Holy Spirit. Rain down upon us like the refreshing rains that come from heaven and nourish your earth. Rain down upon us as one who guides us and directs us, who leads us throughout life. Rain down upon us and nourish us that we might walk in your ways all of our days. Thank you, God. We praise you. Amen. Do you remember puff paints? Mm, back in the, I think the early to mid-90s, puff paints came out. Do you remember? And we all went out and bought an extra sweatshirt.
shirt a t-shirt, girls anyway, guys probably didn't do this, but we all went out and we had to try this puff paint for ourselves so you could draw designs and it would puff up and you could draw that design. It was almost like a, a layer of plastic on the outside of your shirt. Remember that? About that time when those paints came out, um, I was working with a retreat and the retreat had a theme and the theme was rushing wind blow through this temple. It came from a song. It was a wonderful, wonderful image though about our bodies and our lives being God's temple. You know that's true, right? We are God's temples. You know that. Your body, your mind, your spirit, all of you, you are God's temple. And so it makes a difference what you put in, what you allow in, and what you allow to be in and out of your body, your mind, and your spirit. And so you have to be careful. So we want the rushing wind of the Holy Spirit to blow through us. Okay, so that was the message of the song. Rushing wind blow through this temple. Well, if you remember the puff tanks, you might also remember that if you wash them in the washing machine and then dry them in the dryer, that the puff paints didn't last too long. They peeled off, they, pop, they popped off, the design popped off. And so what happened after I washed my sweatshirt that somebody made me that said, rushing wind blow through this temple, is uh, part of the bee fell off. And so it now read, rushing wind plow through this temple. <laughs> and you know, I've thought about that a lot ever since. And that sometimes in our lives we need the soft puff of the Holy Spirit, don't we? Just as the, the Hebrew word ruach <coughs> means the breath of God, that we need just that breath of God breathing in us, guiding us, directing us. And then sometimes we need the whole big thing. We need the mighty rushing wind, the power, the fire. We need all of it. Well, in our lives today and in our church today, we need the Holy Spirit. So I want us to go back and I want us to think about what it might have been like to be one of the disciples and one of the early believers. Now, Scripture says that um, after Jesus ascended into heaven, there were about 120 people gathered together. And then Scripture also says that the disciples were in the upper room. We don't know if it was the same upper room where they had the last supper. It was a different place that they had rented to wait in Jerusalem like Jesus had told them. But the scripture is really unclear whether Pentecost actually happened to the 120 or just the 12 disciples. Um, we know that Judas had gone out and hung himself and been replaced by Matthias at that point. So the 12 disciples were gathered, maybe with other believers, maybe just then, them. But what do you think Pentecost Day would have been like? What do you think you would have felt if you were one of the disciples and Jesus had said, Go, but wait. Stay. Because I'm sending somebody to be among you. Would, would you think that they're waiting for somebody to knock on the door and say, I'm the one, Jesus sent me here, now you're to follow me? Or what, what do you think they might have been expecting? Apparently, from what Scripture says, they were a little bit afraid. Because Scripture says that they were in this room and they had locked all the doors and barred the windows. Okay? So maybe they were a little bit afraid not knowing who's going to knock or who's going to appear. We know that Jesus had not been there one minute and then appeared the next minute, so nothing would have been um, strange to them, I don't think. But they didn't know what was about to happen. So I want us to, um, to get a little bit of an idea of what it might have sounded like or, or looked like. And so um, here's what I want to do. I want this side of the congregation to be... The sound of the winds, not really ripping, rip roaring winds, but let's think of, you know, they're in the room with the doors and windows shut. So, what do you think the spirit wind would sound like? Okay, can, can you can you do wind? Come on, try it with me. Don't be shy. I will come and find you if you don't want to. <laughs> you know, I like to embarrass people. Just ask Andy. Okay, you ready? So, okay, good. This side, I want you to pull out your Bibles, pull them out, I don't care what translation, in fact, the more translations, the better, um, and turn to Acts chapter 2, and, um, and when I tell you to start, you're going to read uh, verses 1 through, um, is that 4 or 5? 1 through 4, you're going to read verses 1 through 4 out loud, don't worry about fitting in with anybody else's tempo, just read the word. Okay, however fast or slow you want to read it, whatever accent you want to use, if you want to read it in Spanish, read it in Spanish, if you want to, however you want to pronounce, pronunciate the words, you do that. Okay, and then we have some fire in the room. Where's my fire? Let me see my fire. 
Okay, let's keep the fire. All right, so don't burn yourself. All right, so we got the wind. Okay, let's get the wind. We got the fire. All right, and let's hear the word. When the day of Pentecost came, when they were all together in one place, suddenly the sound of the roaring violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then Saul had seen the tongues of fire that celebrated the king of the rest on the east All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and the dead and the other tongues as the Spirit came. Okay, so we got the fire. Oh, sorry. I didn't even cut you off. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, don't burn your fingers. Don't burn them down. Unless you want to say, all we are saved. <laughs> um, peace does come through the Holy Spirit, though. That's all I'm saying. So what did you see and what did you hear? What was it like? What do you think it was like? You've seen a little bit of Pentecost. What, what was it like? A cacophony. Yeah, a lot of stuff going around. What did you say, Jack? Inside edition. Inside <laughs> Okay. What did I hear over here somewhere? Scary. Scary. A little bit. Yeah, you didn't know what was going to happen next, did you? Yeah, what else? The storm. It sounded like a storm coming. Yeah. Did you want to go unplug something, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. What else did you think? Radio. Radio. sounded like the radio was going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You didn't know what you were going to hear. Um, did any of you hear the words that weren't reading them? Could you hear them? No. I could hear the words. I could hear the words in my own language. I could hear them. Yeah, so if you if you toned into one remember Superman when Superman first gets his power of super hearing? That at first all he can hear is all of this chaos because he hears everybody. He hears baby crying, he hears typewriters, he hears doorbells, he hears car horns, he hears people screaming, shouting, um, children talking, laughing, crying. He hears all those things and it's just chaos in his head. And then he ab is able to sell up, separate and listen to one thing at a time. Remember that on Superman? And so maybe that's what the people who were gathered around the disciples heard. That out of all of that chaotic noise and the wind and the fire and all the things that were going on there, and I'm sure, you know, for me, I would think like the hair on the back of your neck would be standing up and you'd get like a little goose bumpy, wondering what God was going to do next. But out of that, to be able to hear in your own language, no matter where you were from. Now, 